Welcome to the first episode of Cheap Shot News. My name is Zach. I'll be walking you through the news on a weekly basis. I'm going to try to get out an episode every week, Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, to kind of give you an update of this past week in entertainment news. Basically, what we're going to be covering is TV and movies. So anything like Space Wizards, Regular Wizards, Aliens, comic books, anything like that. Do not expect that to happen here. We're going to be really, really serious. I'm kidding. Look at the pictures behind me. Look at those posters. What do you think we're going to be talking about? We're going to talk about Star Wars and comic book movies and comic book shows. How good is Luke Cage and Daredevil and Jessica Jones? I mean, we got lots to talk about. So today, let's just get right into it. Speaking of comic books, the biggest, I shouldn't say the biggest one. There's a lot of big comic book movies coming out. Doctor Strange is coming out here in a few weeks. But what's really been getting a lot of trend recently is the Logan movie. It's Wolverine 3. They're calling it Logan. Isn't that poetic? Wrapping it up. When he first appeared, he didn't like being called Logan. He liked, uh, he liked Wolverine. So we're kind of wrapping up. The movie is going to be very loosely based on Old Man Logan, the comic book. When I say very loosely based, I mean very loosely based because a lot of the aspects of the comic book, which I actually recently read, do not belong to Fox, which is making this movie. It belongs to uh, Marvel, which is owned by Disney. So there's a lot of aspects of that. Just give you a quick walkthrough and spoilers actually it's not spoilers because it's past five years if you don't know about it that's your fault not mine sorry that's how i feel so basically in the book we're years into the future logan is significantly older it's about it's about 50 years into the future 40 50 years into the future and the entire world has basically been set ablaze uh, mutants and other super powered individuals have taken over mostly evil ones and Logan has stopped fighting, and Hawkeye, who is an Avenger, gets him to kind of join him on a cross-country trip to make a few bucks, and uh, adventures ensue. So uh, a big part of that is also the Hulk and Red Skull, and those both are owned by Marvel as well. So it's going to be hard to match it tone for tone. It does look like it's going to be a darker movie, which I'm super excited for. It's going to be rated R, getting that from Deadpool. Uh, all that excitement from around Deadpool and how much money they made on that movie. I'm not surprised that they decided, hey, let's make it R. We're not really going to lose money on it if we make it an R. And come on, with those claws, man, I want to see him rip people limb from limb. That's not, that's not crazy at all. I think that's what normal people want to see. I'm sick of just stabbing people and then nothing happening. So I'm sorry if I sound a little demented there, but... I think that's what real fans want to see. The The books are bloodier than the movies have been. So it's something that I'm excited for, something to look forward to. And yeah, yeah, I'm excited for it. Hopefully it's not like the other two Wolverine movies, which were both terrible. The first one completely did disservice to pretty much all the characters, uh, not to mention Deadpool. That one, they made Ryan Reynolds play an awful Deadpool, and it was just... It was just nonsense action and stupidity and just the CGI was bad and it's a bad story and we're not going to get into it. And the second one, kind of similar thing, just ridiculous action and, and bad story and bad acting and a horrible villain. So hopefully this one is better. I don't, I don't want to say making it an R definitely makes it a better movie, but I think it gives a new little twist to it and something that I think will be more enjoyable for like the hardcore you know, older fans. So something to get excited about. So the next thing we're going to talk about is something that I actually read today that I think is fairly humorous and interesting, not something that I'm overly interested in, is Leo DiCaprio is teaming up to do a Captain Planet movie. Now, he's going to be producing, so sorry for all you Leo fans out there. I'm a huge Leo fan myself, but he's just going to be producing. He's probably not going to be in it himself. Um, they don't really have a specific person lined up, I don't think, at this time. Glenn Powell, who is on Scream Queens, I believe that's the show. That sounds like the show. 
on Fox is also going to be in it. So he might be Captain Planet. So this was a show for, for you that don't know, this was a show in the early 90s where a group of kids from around the world could summon, I believe this is how it works, I don't really remember it that well, I wasn't a huge fan, summon Captain Planet and they'd go like save the Earth from uh, pollution, I guess. I don't know. Not super interested in it. I find it funny because Leo DiCaprio is a big um, Earth person. Why can't I think of the word? But you know, he's... He's all about earth friendliness and being green and stuff like that. Sorry, terrible at words today, apparently. And and he's he's been all up in that. And there was actually a news story recently, too, where some of the information that he's been presenting is just so incredibly false that people in that community are being like, no, we don't want you to be a part of the community anymore just because you're giving so much non-credible information. So... It makes sense that he would be interested in doing this movie. I just find it kind of funny at the same time. I'm not super excited about it. If you're excited about it, please tell me why in the comments. Comments down below if you're on the YouTube page. Uh, otherwise, you can also comment on the website. So please tell me uh, why you like that show so much growing up. And if you're excited for it or not excited for it coming out in a live action movie. Because I believe, uh, I don't know why they wouldn't do live action. So, next up on the list, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. All you Harry Potter files, phobes, Harry Potter enthusiasts. There we go. That sounds like a good one. Harry Potter enthusiasts. I wasn't a big fan of the book, but I absolutely love the movies. I think they're so much fun. I think it's not a bad thing for a person my age, I'm 27 right now, to be into those movies. Uh, I think it's it's not quite as taboo as I think it is because the books came out when I was younger and then so my age would be the ones that are kind of into the movies now but I not a big reader didn't I got about a hundred pages into the first book and it's good just just not a super huge reader but I love movies and I thought they were great so I'm super excited for Fantastic Beasts an announcement that I was not expecting was that J.K. Rowling came out and a bunch of other uh, a bunch of other um, companies reported this or places reported this uh, is that uh, outlets that's the word terrible at words today guys sorry outlets reported that uh, there's going to be five movies made in this series which I thought was a lot coming into this it's that's that's a lot to just project out now that being said. The Harry Potter movies are some of the highest gross, grossing movies of all time, so they're just already projecting like, we're we're going to do, probably not as good, but we'll do well above what we put into this to be able to keep churning out movies. Now, the, the problem that we run into is kind of a similar problem that a lot of people had with the Hobbit movies of the Hobbit book was not a very long book, and they stretched it into three movies with stupid plot points and different things like that. I didn't hate them by any means, but a lot of people who had read the book very much disliked how they added in plot points that never existed in the book and characters that weren't in the book, like adding in Legolas, who is not in the Hobbit book. So they're saying that a kind of about a Fantastic Beast. Now, I don't know much about the actual book Fantastic Beast and where to find them. I know it's mentioned in the first Harry Potter book. I think it's also mentioned in the first Harry Potter movie, but I do believe there is an actual book and it's not a very long book. That being said, this, this is a situation where we're going to expand on the universe that is provided to us. J.K. Rowling is gonna oversee a lot of this. She's gonna have her hands in it and I'm sure she's gonna have a, some creative control probably uh, as a producer or something like that. And she's gonna have her hands in this a lot and so, I'm not overly concerned about it. They're going to expand this character from going to New York. It sounds like he's going to other countries in the world. There's an entire world of magical beasts that we can discover, and we're going to go on those journeys together. To me, it's going to be more about how do you put that antagonist into it and have you know some of that drama outside of just creatures. And creatures can have drama. We saw that in other Harry Potter books with like dragons and different things like that and uh, you know trolls and whatnot, spiders, but that typically can't hold out through an entire movie so you're going to have to have some sort of antagonist and I don't know if uh, Colin Farrell's character 
is going to be that. He is the it looks to be the main antagonist in this movie, but it looks as if Eddie Redmayne's on board for these. So I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. I uh, I think, like I said, it's a it's a little interesting to see them doing five right off the bat. Typically, you kind of plan on a sequel and then and then a trilogy, and then you kind of move on from there. But they're confident, and there's really no reason I don't think they should be. So, continuing on, what is next on the docket? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I actually didn't realize this until I actually read an article. I'd heard a lot about it. Disney is putting out lots of live-action movies of old classes, classics, so they're making old cartoons into live-action now. So a lot of the old ones, and then they're doing sequels to a lot of the live action stuff they've done recently, <coughs> like Maleficent and uh, Jungle Book. They're going to be making those, but I didn't realize, and it depends on the source you're looking at, it looks like they're going to be doing as, as little as 16 live action movies and as many as 18 depending on the outlet that you look at. So I've seen as high as 18, I've seen as low as 16 but they're going to be making tons of live action movies and it's basically all the stuff that you either loved as a kid or you know your older siblings loved or even your parents loved as children we're talking about like uh i'm trying to think if they're doing a snow white or not they're definitely doing aladdin they're doing lion king they're doing dumbo pinocchio one of my old time favorites and this is well before i was even born but i liked it growing up was sword in the stone and what I find interesting is that that uh, Brian Cogman, one of the writers and a producer on Game of Thrones, is actually uh, set to write the remake. So I always like that. It's I think it could be done really well as maybe like a PG-13 and a little grittier because you got aspects of magic. You got aspects of like transformation, human transformation, and like fish and squirrels and stuff like that. And it's based on, you know, a King Arthur story, which which is a grittier story, typically. So I, I'm really excited for that one. Um, a lot of these other ones, it's just, I feel like they're kind of being, I shouldn't say they, we're kind of being cheated as, you know, they're they're just drawing off our, off, off our nostalgia at this point in time. And like, hey, you love these as, as kids, come and watch them with your kids as adults. And the creativity is kind of gone. And I know they're going to make other movies in there and Pixar is still going to do their thing and they're going to make good stuff. But I do feel like, well, let's just fill up the next 10 years of our schedule with just remakes so we don't really have to, you know, work on original ideas. I'm still excited for it, but at the same time, I hope they do mix in some good original work in there as well. So I'm going to put links to all the stuff I'm talking about below. So I'm going to link to to a Disney, um, basically, article that you can look through to see the different ones. Tell me which ones you're excited about. I want to hear about them, and tell me why. Is it something that you grew up in, the, in childhood and just loved that movie? Or you just think it would be a cool idea to make a live action? You think it would be done better live action than it was in cartoon? Let me know why. So... Continuing on, we're going to talk about, this one's kind of interesting to me, a little more controversial, so I want to know what you guys feel about this as well. But I've been reading recently, and he's been trending on social media a little bit here, is Mel Gibson has, is apparently no longer blacklisted from Hollywood. Like, I don't know if there's like a specific jail time you get for, you know, saying bad stuff about a certain race or an ethnicity as ethnicity uh, or being anti-semitic specifically but apparently it's about 10 years so Mel Gibson for the last 10 years has been doing very little he's done actually nothing in regards to directing the last 10 years his last movie was Apocalypto and now he is coming out with Hacksaw Ridge which is a from what I hear is a contender for best picture next year so it looks solid. It's a movie about World War II, uh, basically a, a medic in World War II that refused to fight. He was non-combatant, but he was also one of the greatest heroes in American history. He saved 
I don't know the exact number, but lots and lots of soldiers while also refusing to pick up and fire a weapon. So very good movie based on the, you know, some critic screenings and different things like that. I'm super excited for it. I think he's a phenomenal director. And I also really liked him as an actor back in the day. Some of the first action movies I watched when I was younger were the Lethal Weapon movies. And those movies are legit. They're funny. They're filled with action. They're filled with drama. And the chemistry between Riggs and Murtaugh is just awesome. And it works so well. And I think it still works well today. It's a classic late 80s, early 90s action movie. I should say action movies. And in another one that I love from Mel Gibson that is a little under the radar is Maverick. Super funny movie uh, with him and other people. Sorry. I should probably do my research ahead of time, right? Right? Jodie Foster's in it. That's who's in it. Come on, Zach. Get your crap together. And James Garner. Rest his soul. That guy was a good actor. That guy was solid. All right. So, yeah. And... So basically what my opinion is on that is, yes, what he did was not okay. And, and especially as a man who, you know, calls himself a Christian, I think privately, and me just speaking personally, I view myself as a Christian as well. Not cool what you did, man. Not okay. That being said, I'm also for forgiveness and, and you know, realizing that people make mistakes and I think he served his quote unquote time here. And a lot of people I know are like, nope, he should be blacklisted from here to eternity. I don't think that's the case. I'm totally for second chances. I actually probably would have gave him a second chance sooner than this. So I, it's, it's definitely not something that I want to promote, but it's definitely not the worst thing anyone could ever do. So there's been definitely um, worse people in Hollywood that have not basically gotten the treatment that he has in regards to not being able to do his craft. So, so that's just my opinion. If you have a different opinion than me, fantastic. I'd love to hear it. Tell me why. Tell me why you think, you know, that Mel Gibson should never be in Hollywood again. But I'm super excited that he, he is because I really enjoyed him when I was younger. And I'm happy to see if he still kind of got that crazy uh, over the top mentality. He's a solid actor. So, um, yeah, that's going to be it for that, I guess. Moving on to, well, this this really isn't in the realm of what I talked about earlier of movies and television, but something that I'm really excited about in its comic book things. So it kind of relates and it kind of relates to movies and television. Well, Batman Return to Arkham. It's a video game. I believe it's both on PS4 and Xbox One. It's basically they remastered the game for the games of Arkham City and Arkham Asylum for both those consoles, re-releasing them. Batman is the best superhero of all time. I mean, ser guys, guys, let's be serious right now. I know that him beating Superman probably isn't the most realistic thing in the world, but the guy does what he does on just pure talent alone. If you take away his suit, you take away his armor, you take away all his money, he can still beat the crap out of pretty much anybody. And he's he's human, full-blooded human, unlike Thor or Green Lantern, who's human, but is powered by a super ring and lantern, and Superman, who's an alien. And then even, like, people could make the same argument about Iron Man, and he's a decent fighter, probably outside the suit, but not as good as Batman. So Batman's the best hands down. And I would say those games are the best superhero games money can buy. There's never been better superhero games than the Arkham games, Arkham City, Arkham Asylum, and I'm wrapping up right now, uh, Arkham Knight. So awesome games. If you're a gamer, check them out. And we're going to get back on topic now. Still kind of talking about games though, is the Assassin's Creed, their second trailer came out today. I'm a big fan of Michael Fassbender in pretty much anything that he does. Uh, there's probably been a handful that I don't like, but I think he's a phenomenal actor. I'm really excited to see what he does in the future. 
I was really excited about the Assassin's Creed movies, and I'm still hesitantly excited. The reason I say that is I feel like they have failed to grasp why those games were awesome. And if you don't know, the Assassin's Creed games are basically, you take a human being in modern times that has ancestors in the past, and you relive their ancestors' memories through this person. And uh, you can... And that's how where you play the game is through the person in the past. So the first game was in basically uh, biblical times in the Middle East, and then Italian in like the third century, second or third century, something like that. Maybe it was later than that. I'm not sure. But anyways, the the idea though is that you're able to do these things through this person. It covers up a lot of plot inconsistencies in video games because you can't really die if you're just in their memories. So that's a part of it. But the what the trailer seems to be doing, and maybe this is what they're just showing us now in anticipation for later, is they're showing us a lot more of present time Michael Fassbender's character right now in present day as he's basically, uh, his death is faked and then he's brought to this facility where he's forced to relive the memories of his ancestors uh, from the Spanish in Spanish Inquisition. And so what I found is throughout the trailer, they're actually focused more on him now than they are whatever he's doing in the Spanish Inquisition. And that's not what the game is, though. The game was about you being able to go back and relive these memories, memories that you could control, essentially, in killing people and doing crazy stunts and climbing and parkour and all this fun stuff. And I feel like they're missing out on that a little bit. It's rare that video games transfer really well to movies. So it's just not quite there. I'm still probably going to see it, but I'm a little hesitant. My expectations have been lowered a little bit, and maybe they need to be lowered. Typically, come in, people come into video game movies up here. Sorry, I'm having a hard time finding my camera. There it is. There's the stuff. Uh, and then and then movies just can't meet their expectations. So maybe it's not a bad thing that expectations are lowered. I'll put a link down below for the trailer. I'll probably link it here in the video somewhere actually as well. So uh, close in to wrap up here. Before we do though, I just want to give you one suggestion on a show that I think everyone should watch. Not everyone. If you're if you're really opposed to violence or any nudity at all, this probably isn't for you. But Westworld, we're three episodes in right now, and it is legit. It is awesome. I love it. Three episodes in, they have not answered a single question from any of the past episodes. They just keep giving more questions. So I feel like this is going to be like Game of Thrones in a few different ways of, of well, it's Game of Thrones-ish in regards to the violence and and uh, sex and different stuff like that. There probably isn't as much sex and nudity in it so far as Game of Thrones have. Anyways, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to leave a lot of plot lines unturned until season two or season three or season four. Right now, we've heard it's going to go season five seasons. It's based on uh, a movie by Michael Crichton back in, I want to say, late 70s. And uh, basically, it's a world where it's a theme park for adults, where they go to this world and they pay premium money to go there and interact with uh, hosts, which are basically, they're not robots because they're made of tissue, but they're, they're built by humans. And and you can you can kill them. You can do whatever you want with them. Fill in the blank. Literally fill in the blank. And it's kind of morally ambiguous that way because it's a little weird. But it's such a go sh good show. It's so well done. Anthony Hopkins is in it. Ed Harris is in it. Evan Rachel Wood, Thaddy Newton. The cast is ridiculous, which makes me a little nervous because how are they going to end up paying all these people? Because it's going to get spendy. Unlike Game of Thrones where most of the actors were relatively unknown. A lot of these people are well known. 
or semi well known. James Marsden is one of them. So definitely check it out. It's on HBO. Not everybody has HBO, but if you have a friend, you can come watch it with me if you want. Just, it's so good. You need to watch it. It's so well done. Basically, just to give you a quick idea, it's like if iRobot met Jurassic World and craziness ensues, but you're not really sure what's happening. So definitely watch it. And that's going to do it for me today. I ran a little longer than I want to typically do, but thank you so much for joining. I hope this was of interest to you. If you liked it, please subscribe. It's probably going to be over here. It might be over here. Please subscribe. Uh, check out our website. I'll put all the links down. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Definitely check us out. Hopefully you liked us. Like and, subscri uh, like and subscribe if you did. And we will see you next week.